All right, so of course, when you're thinking of sports photography, you think of action photos, but action photos are just the bread and butter of sports photography. It's the appetizer. Actually, not even the appetizer. It's the free stuff they give you at the beginning of the meal. That's the stuff you have to get no matter what, the action photos. So we need to move beyond the action photos if you wanna improve your take from a game. And to really improve your photos, you wanna look at three other things. You wanna find the details, you gotta get the reactions, and you wanna tell the story. So first, looking for the details, right? You wanna show people what it's like being at the game. Not even at the game, what it's like being in the game, a part of the game. You wanna give them those details that they're not gonna see on the screen, they're not gonna see from the stands. You wanna find those things that just kind of describe what's happening in the game and just make people really feel like they were there. And on my way to a recent Red Sox game, I was listening to this book called The Art of Noticing by Rob Walker. And in it, they give you like 131 ways to practice creativity by sort of just noticing what's around you. And it really sparked in me that with photography, this is very useful because you want to know what's going on on the field, but you also want to be aware of things that are happening all around you in the stands, the dugouts, pregame, warmups, right? In between pitches, in between innings, at halftime, there's tons of time to get photos other than the game action. And like I said before, I think people really love sports photos because it allows them to see into the game, the behind the scenes, things that they would never get to see, except that they get to see it through your eyes. So they get to see these details that you notice that they'd never get to experience. And not only is it helping you just sort of get better images or different images, but it also just is a way to keep you engaged in the game because if I'm being honest, shooting the 25th baseball game in a couple months can get pretty boring. So looking for these small details, these other things are a helpful way to keep me engaged in shooting and just getting good photos. So even if these detail photos don't end up actually looking that good or you miss out on some things, it's okay because it's, keeping you engaged. It's gonna lead you to more photos in the future by just practicing finding these small details. And that's what this book was saying. It was giving you 131 activities, ways to practice the art of noticing. And some of them could just be, you know, stay on the lookout for all the blue objects in a room. And you just kind of sit there and you go through and you're trying to find and notice all these blue objects, things that you wouldn't have necessarily noticed before. Or it could just be staring at a painting or a photo for five or 10 minutes, which sounds like an insanely long time when typically we're just scrolling past on Instagram in a few seconds. So you're gonna end up seeing something in the photo or the painting, you're gonna notice the light more, you're gonna notice maybe the brush strokes, you're gonna notice a lot more when you're paying attention to that. So getting into this habit of noticing things of on your walks or drives, you're just looking and observing and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool or I've never noticed that before, can translate to photography when you're taking pictures. You're like, oh, maybe I should get a picture of every time Xander Bogarts goes to the plate, he draws an X you know, in the dirt before he steps into the box. Maybe it's a good photo, maybe it's not a good photo, but it's just things that you're noticing that could end up being good photos. So the next time you go out to a game, think about an object or a theme, something that you want to capture that you normally would look past. So sometimes I pick out like shoes or cleats because in basketball or baseball, different sports, some guys have things written on their shoes or they have cool designs or their names, something interesting like that. Or maybe it's even they're running along the base path and the dirt is flying up off their shoes. It could just be kind of like a nice detail photo and you never know what you're really gonna get, but it just will lead to you observing like, oh, next time, that could actually be a really good photo if I take the time to get it right. Now, the next thing you wanna do is looking for reactions and the, the emotions of the game. Because the emotions a lot of times are kind of better than the action photos. The reaction can tell the story a lot better than the actual action that's happening. Take, for example, this walk-off hit from the other night where, yeah, it's nice to have the swinging hit photo, but it kind of looks like every other swinging hit photo and it just progressively gets better as the emotion and the reaction intensifies because these are the photos that are going to really tell the story. These are the things that actually kind of have a bigger impact and 
tell you what's going on, makes you more curious about what just happened. Where if it's just the guy swinging, you're like, okay, did he hit a home run? Did he strike out? I don't know. But you see these guys celebrating on the field and you're like, oh, what just happened there? So it gets people more curious and interested in that photo. Or take, for example, this one where the pitcher is reacting to a home run he gave up, but it's instantaneous. The batter hasn't even finished his swing yet and he knows that he gave up that home run. A lot of my favorite pictures aren't the action photos. It's the celebrations, it's the reactions, it's the joy, it's the jubilation, but it's also the dejection, right? Sometimes those sad photos or upset photos are a lot better than just that normal action photo. And if you can get the joy and the dejection in one photo, it's the best. So to get good reaction photos, you really need to pay attention and know what's going on in the game. For example, if a pitcher gives up a home run, typically they're just kind of, you know, oh, give me the ball back. They're a little, you know, dejected, but the runner is going to run past them in the background. So a lot of times that's a better photo to focus on the pitcher reacting with the runner running by him in the background because you kind of know what's happening if you see someone running and the pitcher's upset. But if I'm just focused on the batter running from first to second base, he's already celebrated. He's just kind of trotting around the bases. It's not as good of a photo. So typically I'll look at the pitcher first and then I'll get the runner when they're coming back towards third base or home to give some high fives. Or if a pitcher has two strikes on a batter and there's two outs and he strikes them out, a lot of times if it was a pressure situation, they're gonna turn towards the dugout and give a good reaction. So knowing this ahead of time, instead of focusing on the batter with two strikes, I might focus on the pitcher and wait for that reaction to happen. Now I wouldn't do this if it's a potentially game-winning home run um, if the batter hits it, but I'd focus on the batter then, and then if he strikes out, quickly try to switch to the pitcher and catch that reaction after the fact. And in Ultimate Frisbee, a lot of times the players are rushing onto the field after a point and celebrating, so say the play is on the opposite side of the field, and I'm not really going to have a great photo of it, I'll switch to my wide, or I'll you know, switch to the 7200 and get a photo of those players on the sidelines rushing onto the field cheering, because that emotion is going to be a lot better photo than the one from across the field that's going to have a bad background. So it's thinking about these things, knowing these beforehand that is going to help you get better photos. And these aren't things you're going to figure out the first time you're out shooting a game or a sport. Even if you know the sport, you're not going to know everything that's happening or you're going to forget like, oh, I forget all the time that like, oh yeah, I should be on the pitcher with two strikes or I'm not paying attention and I miss a reaction. So you gotta be paying attention. It's things that you observe, like maybe a guy does a backflip every time he celebrates and you're like, yeah, definitely missed that the first time, but I'm gonna keep that in my head and next time he scores a goal, I'm gonna make sure that I'm focused right on him for that backflip. So the emotions and the reactions are the things that really tell the story of the game. And speaking of story, that's the next thing that we gotta talk about. So you want to be aware of what's going on in the game as i've sort of mentioned before it helps you get better photos but you also want to you know know who are the important players who's having a really good you know shooting night who's scored a lot of points so that you can make sure you have photos of those players even if they're not the best but they will inform the viewer there's going to be the storyline the next day from the game so a recent red sox game aaron judge hit two home runs which was his 56th and 57th of the year which is a lot of home runs and the Yankees won, so it's going to probably be a storyline. So, yeah, I got him swinging and hitting the home runs. I got some, made sure I got some celebration of him, you know, when he's coming off the field, high-fiving. But also at the end of the game, I'm keeping that in the back of my head when, okay, they're going to finish the game. He's going to run off the field. They're going to do more high-fives. I'm going to be locked on him because he's going to be more of the story than maybe any of the other players. Now, maybe someone else hits a game-winning home run, then I try to get both of them high-fiving in a photo, and then you have both of the players that are the main stories in one photo. So telling the story also means you need to sort of set the scene, like what's happening? Is it really rainy? Is it bad weather? Uh, where are you? What's the venue? And so this can be wide photos of the venue I like to do at a lot of the games just to kind of set the scene, let people know like, oh, I'm at a high school or I'm at the Red Sox. It tells you know the general idea of what's happening. But it can also be using the background. So when I shot the NBA Finals, they have NBA Finals logos everywhere. So when I'm cropping my images or shooting pregame, I'm trying to kind of have those in the background so people know, oh, this shot of Steph Curry was at the NBA Finals. 
right? It gives some scene setting to the image. They know instantly sort of when and where this happened. If you look at any Olympics photos, you're gonna see what I mean. All the time, it's either on the ping pong ball, there's the rings, or it says Rio, or you know whatever the city is, or it's in the background, there's rings and city names everywhere because you want people to know this is the Olympics. These are the premier athletes vying for gold medals, okay? It's kind of like, you know, the old, if the tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? If you were at the Olympics, but the rings aren't in your photos, were you really at the Olympics? You don't know because it's just a photo of a guy playing ping pong, but once you put the rings in there, it kind of just elevates the photo. People know like, oh, this is like, you know, something special. And then one of the worst things that happens is like you get a great reaction, a great emotion photo, you know, at the beginning of a game and then the team ends up losing. So that photo still might be good, it's a cool photo, but it actually doesn't end up telling the story at all because it's the Red Sox being happy, but the Yankees won. So I hate when that happens, but you know, you can still use those photos if it's a really great photo for your portfolio or Instagram, whatever you wanna do, but it, you know, doesn't end up telling the story of the actual game. So I'm sure there's things that I missed. You know, if you have any things that you love to shoot, any details or emotions, any tips on how to get that stuff, please let me know. I'm always looking to get better. I hope this information helps you get better and see you next time.